What is the crack, peeps? So listen, we're back. We're live at 11. We had a break here for a couple of weeks because my voice just completely shit itself. You might have heard me. I was talking like I was man on the fucking sex line, David. It was wild. <laughs> but uh, it's good to be back, and it's good to welcome David Dunham. David, tell these people who you are and what you're going to talk about on the show. Cool. Thanks, Sean. So I'm David Dunn. I own CrossFit Powerful in Blanchestown. I've been working in the fitness industry for 13 years now. I started off in commercial gyms. Then I moved from one big commercial gym to a different one. After a few years, got fed up with that and then kind of wanted to open my own gym and decided that's what I was going to do. And then five and a half years later, here we are with a full CrossFit gym. And we're looking to expand now and open a studio up above the CrossFit gym and hire a couple of people. Holy shit. So this has been like five, <laughs> what, five, five years we've known each other? Is that, is that how long we... Well, we've known each other before that because I done when you were at Leisure Industry Academy with them before the elite even started. I done all those courses, the TRX, the kettlebells, my wildy, and I already had my PT before I met you guys, so I never did that with you. But um, I always done all those CPD courses and stuff like that, and then I went back to elite then to do more add-on courses over the years, and then we came in. I think you remember I done a bit of sales training with EOJ a few yeah. years ago. We would have done that all upstairs and we talked talk about the phone scripts and how to sell memberships and how to talk to a person in the appropriate manner and um, for whatever they're looking for and how to sell our product to the right customer for us. Gotcha. And I think I've actually met someone who talks faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. You talk quick. Okay, well, let's just roll this back in. So the, the business you run at the minute, like what? tell us a bit more about it. You've, you've got a, a CrossFit gym, or what sort of size is it? Who do you operate with? What are you, what are you trying to achieve with this thing? Cool, so a CrossFit gym is about uh, 3,000 square foot, the actual working out space, but the whole facility is going to be, we're in the uh, reconstruction at the moment, we're building more space in upstairs, and the whole facility will then be 6,500 square foot in total, nice. um, which means that we'll have our CrossFit gym downstairs and our studio upstairs with other classes on, and then we have our showers, our changing rooms, and our coffee shop as well. And then an office for all our staff and a kitchen for our staff to have their lunches and stuff in as well. Holy um, shit, that's a big facility, man, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it's just growing. So like, we're at the stage now where we want to expand to other areas of fitness, not just CrossFit for people who have no interest in CrossFit or might not at the moment, if they're a beginner to fitness, they might want to start with something different first, you know? Okay, and like that's another reason we have you on here, David, because you, you want somebody to join a team here with you at the moment, yeah. don't you? Absolutely. Okay. We're looking for someone to start probably in the end of July, start of August, when we have the refurb done, who's going to run classes in our studio for us and actually take charge of that studio and book people in, make sure the classes are running on time, make sure the classes are of good quality. We'll obviously help promote and advertise the classes and sign up memberships. And then your job is to come in and teach really good classes for us at least 10 or 12 hours a week. Gotcha. Who do you reckon this position is going to be perfect for? Like, what, what sort of do you do? Or do we're do? looking for someone who's taught classes for at least a year because it, we're not going to be up there with you. There's not going to be any other of our staff teaching classes for in that area. We'll only be doing CrossFit. So we're looking for someone who has a bit of class experience, but now is looking to either leave maybe a commercial gym or start off on their own. And then if you want to do classes for us and some person training on, on your free time in our space, that's totally fine as well. We want you to be able to expand as a trainer and grow your business for yourself and use our facility to do that. We're gonna offer training, obviously, like what we do with you guys, the sales and the marketing stuff and how to do Facebook and Instagram ads. And we'll also train on how to run a good class, how to coach people if you're training people one-on-one, -on -one, how to go through different scenarios with clients maybe sick or injured, or you might come up with some unique scenarios in the class and you have to modify the class. So someone with uh, an injury might have to still take part. All of those little things that, a new person to fitness might not be have experience, but yeah, we want to cover those and train you over the next year to be a really good instructor. Okay, sounds like a fucking crack in opposition. Yeah, so you've got a position here then for somebody with like maybe a bit more experience, but yeah, who you're gonna back up with, give them all yeah. the training, support, guidance, strategic direction, yeah. everything, help grow it. Fucking daily, man. daily, and uh, well, tell us a wee bit more about your stuff here because like. You've got a, I know your main thing's CrossFit. How did you get yeah. into CrossFit? How did you get into all that stuff? How did that become your direction here? Well, years ago, I worked in the commercial gyms for years and I was just happened to bump into someone who was in the free weights area doing like something that looked like CrossFit and I never really heard a lot about before and they recommended CrossFit to me. So I went out to Cross Ireland out in near you guys and I said, I'll just do a few classes, started signing up and then just got into it from there. Loved it, loved the fact that it was different, loved that it was higher in scale and it was always a challenge for me because i could always go to the gym and train and motivate myself but this was a new challenge for me 
And I knew the industry was going to start to shift and people were going to start doing cross it just by the way that it could be scalable for anybody. Anybody could take part. And I just love that you were training with people who had the same interest as you all the time. And then I just started training there for a while. And then once uh, the commercial gym I found out was knew I was training there, they started changing my hours over my class. So I couldn't go and train there. So then that's when I decided I was going to open my own gym and go out on my own. So I would have liked to stay doing CrossFit for a bit longer before opening my own facility because I would have learned a lot more about it and kind of about running, running a facility by myself and that kind of side of things. But unfortunately, I was just kind of forced into that position where I had to leave sooner than I wanted. Okay. So like, this is the thing, you know, you just said there you were forced into the position. It's not easy fucking running your own business, is it? No. Like, so t tell us some of the things you've come up against because I know some of the people that are watching this are going to be either thinking about getting into fitness. There's lots of people who are on my list haven't even done a personal training course, but they're thinking that way. They're like, fuck, I want to get into fitness. There may be some people who are been in it for a while and want to move it on a bit and are thinking about opening their gym. So if you were like trying to give them a heads up by talking about some of your experiences, what sort of shit struggles have you had to get where you are now, man? Yeah, so lots of shit has gone wrong. Lots of shit has gone right as well. But I mean, I think people need to look back at why they want to start a gym in the first place or why they want to get into the fitness industry and why they want to help people. Like a lot of people just want the money and the easy lifestyle, do a bit of training, coach a few clients and then go home. It's unfortunately not going to be that easy. But one thing is for sure, if you do get results with your clients and they keep coming back and they have a good retention rate, the money is just going to follow anyway because they're going to refer more people and refer more people. And your highest rate of growth is going to be from mostly referrals, not new people. And I think a lot of people worry about that to start. And they also worry about if I'm cheaper, I'll get more people than everybody else. That's not going to work either long term because you can't sustain paying your rent, your electricity, the maintenance on your building, your insurance, your tax. If the them rates keep going up, you have the same number of people in your class. There's only going to be a certain amount of size in the room to fit people in. If you don't increase your price and the rates keep going up, eventually you're just not going to be able to sustain that. So I think you need to value your product at the rate that you know you're going to be able to sustain and grow with for a long time, which is something we didn't realize at the start. As soon as we we started off in a building that was smaller than what we're in now, with another business partner, he left after a few months. That really screwed us over. I had to sell my car. I had to run to work every day to make ends meet. I had to get five new members within a month or I wouldn't have been able to pay the rent. So we did all that. Struggled through the first year, then moved to this bigger facility because the landlord came in and knocked the, our building down for houses where we were in. So we had to move up here to where we are now. And then as soon as we did that, we increased the rates by 40 euro per month per member, which allowed us to grow at a faster rate, buy more equipment, hire one on our coach, pay our rent, pay our rates, have money left over in case we needed it for maintenance or anything that came up. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people undervalue the, their product too much and then they struggle for so long that they just give up. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Like one of the things I just want to point that you said out there, a lot of people get into this for the money. And they, <laughs> yeah. for me... That should be the side effect, just like you've explained there. Like, if you love helping people and you're on a mission and you find your, I suppose, what you were passionate about with CrossFit, like that was your thing, you're like, fuck, I love this. Yeah. And you like getting clients' results and you do provide a good service. The side effect is money. Whereas, like, most people think that, that, oh, I want money and I'm going to use, I'm just going to train people. It's like, fuck, it, does, it doesn't really work that way. I mean, you have to fall in love with the process, I think. Most people just want the end result. They don't actually want to do the hard work it takes to get yeah. there. Um, and I'm sure you can tell from still the passion in my voice. I'm excited to launch this new studio. I'm 13 years in the industry and I still love helping people. What I've done is I've hired other people in other areas of my business to allow me to still coach. So we have a personal assistant, we have accountants, we have people who do our marketing first. So that means I don't have to do anything on my laptop ever now. I've trained those people into do the stuff I want them to do. So I can now coach and program and sell memberships. So all I have to do now is do those three things and do them really, really well. And everyone else take care of the rest of the stuff for us. And then our other coaches have to come in and teach good classes. And then they get training off me to be better. And we're just trying to move the business forward in that sense, rather than trying to take a step away and not do any coaching yeah. and just try to have other people do the work. That's another mistake I see gym owners make. Maybe some people just don't like coaching, which is fine. You want other yeah. people to do it for them. But I love coaching and that's my strongest point. And I love the programming. So for me to hire people to support the other areas of the business, was what was most important for me to grow my business because I think we talked a few months ago about joining the Ascension Group and user asked me why do I want to do it and it was because I needed another person full time so I could do those things but after the conversation I had I said I, did, I nearly thought about not doing the Ascension because it's a waste of a space that someone else could benefit from because my main 
focus was to hire someone who could support my business, not work in it for me, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I did that straight after that phone call. I hired a personal assistant and I trained her to do marketing, sales and all that other stuff. So now I'm back in the business doing what I like to do and the other stuff is after falling into place. And we've grown about, I'd say, a third of our membership just since that. That was about nine months ago, I think. Yeah. You know, so now I don't actually need to do the Ascension as such and take a place from someone who could really benefit from it. Well, I, I would I would disagree because the thing is, yeah. what you pointed out is very wise. You've yeah. you've actually found that your unique ability is coaching, and yeah. you've also pinpointed one of the biggest mistakes. And you said the biggest mistakes gym owners make is they think their job is to scale themselves out of the coaching. It's yeah. not the job of a business owner is to find out where they have your unique ability and fucking stay there. Yeah. So the most important question you said is like, why are you doing what you're doing? You know. Some, some people forget to ask themselves that question. Some people think they should want all this other stuff. I should scale myself out of my business. You know, this is the, the, the way it's done. It's not, it's, and you're, you're very wise for, for seeing that your skill was coaching and staying there and hiring people to do the things you don't want to do. Yeah, I mean, and, and the things that you're not good at as well. Yeah, if you're not good at, you've done the exact thing that, like, that's what I would advise you to, to do. Then yeah. what is the thing that you love? Well, like, what do you want to do when you wake up in the fucking morning? This is the hardest yeah. question. One of the hardest questions you can ask yourself as a businessman, versus like what you can be polluted by by the advice of people that's on the internet. You should be a six figure trainer. You should scheme yourself out of your business and then fucking yeah. open up your four other gyms. It's like maybe you should, yeah. maybe you should. What do you actually want to do? It could be a whole lot of other worries or a whole lot of shit you don't need or hassle you don't yeah. need. So that's a fucking wise movement. Very well, yeah. very well done there. I think a lot of people listening should take a leaf out of your book. Yeah, you know? yeah. There's nothing worse than getting into training because you love coaching people and then turning your dream and job into your fucking desk job behind a laptop yeah, yeah. and learn marketing. I think I spent the whole year hating. I actually never trained a lot for nearly a whole year because I hated the fact that I was never able to actually go into the gym and enjoy coaching because I was always so busy doing the admin and the paperwork and the accounts. The Facebook ads and replying to emails and dealing with council members, new members, uploading programs. And I just got so distracted with all that. I was burnt out and I didn't like that I had to work so many hours a day and then I had to go down and coach. And then I didn't enjoy coaching because I was so tired from doing the other stuff. Yeah. Then I didn't train because I was too tired after coaching. And now yeah. I'm so free that I only have to work maybe four or five hours a day and then I can train whenever I want. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I don't work on a Thursday, Saturday or a Sunday. And that's even more free time for me. Yes, like usually people that come to the Ascension want to find out how can I, you know, increase my impact? How can I impact more people with, because they've got great messages. A lot of coaches have great messages, they've great products, great ability, but they don't, they aren't able to share it with enough people. Because usually the only way to impact more people is to work more hours. And to work more hours, they have to either turn their dream job into a desk job or struggle with shit that they don't want to do. Yeah. Usually people want to try and have an impact, make enough money, <laughs> And get the freedom they want by doing the yeah. things that you love. But sometimes you've got to say no more than yeah. say yes. And you just find out what you needed to say no to. No, yeah. I'm not going to be a marketer. No, yeah. I'm not going to do it. And that's the right thing to do. And I think it's direction and guidance people need to actually yeah. know and have the confidence to say, no, 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 no. I'm going to say no to being a marketer because this is what I actually love. So the most important thing is what you've done is find out your unique ability. Where, where can I use my limited amount of willpower and energy, focus it in the right direction to get the result that I want. And you've yeah. done that for me, mate. Well done. Now, um, I know um, you, you mentioned it, you sort of glazed over like, this is a true story. You got where you are by fucking selling your car. Yeah, because, man. Like, tell me, just go into that a little bit more. Like, well, how I was already started. I was working in a commercial gym. I won't name the gym because people know me. A lot of people know me there and a lot of people know me in Blanchestown, so I won't name the places. I was working okay. in a commercial gym and I had a friend who was really good friends with me for a long time who was in the industry as well, working in uh, another branch of that commercial gym. We opened the gym together. It was going well for a few weeks. Eventually, he just didn't want to do it anymore. We fell out. He just left. The whole thing fell apart for a few weeks. I was fucking depressed, upset. I thought I was going to lose the whole thing. Couldn't pay the rent. Ringing up the landlord, asking for a fucking rent reduction for a few weeks to just get by. Uh, we lost a lot of the clients because he was obviously coaching certain hours and I was coaching certain hours and I couldn't do it all by myself. So I had to let people go. Then I sold my car to pay the month's rent, the next month's rent. Then I had to get another five members within a month after that to pay the next month's rent. And then Shit. I couldn't buy new equipment or anything. 
So then I was running to work or walking to work every day because I could barely fucking afford the bus or a taxi or anything like that. And then I had to move back in with my parents. So they were giving me free rent at home so I could just live. So then I worked hard for the rest of that year to get the business profitable again, which it did. I got members in. I got uh, two classes on in the morning and three classes on every evening. And I got them full up. And then at the end of that year, then a landlord came in and handed us an eviction notice for three weeks wow. to move out because we were, uh, they were knocking down for our houses on the property. So then we had a panic. Then we had to move. Then we were worried, where, where will we move to? Because we need the members to follow us because we have, don't want to have to rebuild from scratch. Where can we afford? Because we're just barely able to afford rent now. And all of that kind of stuff. And then we're really lucky. We have a couple of members here who are painters and electricians and, and can come up and do a bit of work in the unit and get it up for us in a few weeks. So we can move in quite quickly without having a big break between the two gyms stopping and starting, if that makes sense. Yep. That's kind of how it started. And then I was like, in my mind, I was like, I'm not going back to a commercial gym. So I have to make this work. So I had to figure out what I needed to do to get by that first year, to make it profitable again, to get back to where I wanted to be. So the first year was complete write off, basically made a loss, started again in year two in the new place. And that was just a break even year as well, pretty much because we had to grow the place. We had to put in toilets and showers and stuff here because there was nothing in the unit whatsoever then year three was actually our first profitable year and then we're on to year six now so the last couple of years have been really good for us excellent so, man like what i'm thinking from that story is like you were big time <laughs> bad in that fucking yeah. year like holy shit shit could not it sounds like shit could not have got any worse like most people wouldn't have been able to put in that work i i feel most people would have said you know what fuck this i quit like yeah. Would you agree? Like a lot of people, yeah, a lot of not- people would quit. But my mindset was, I love working in the fitness industry. I'm not going back working for a commercial gym because I want to run my facility the best way I can to help people. Whereas I can't do that in a commercial facility if you don't have control of over how you train people, what type of class you teach, how you work with clients, and how you deal with clients. If you can't do that, you can't provide the service that you know would help people. So my mindset was, if we can get by this first year, I'll be able to still work in a job that I love working in and i won't have to go back to work in the commercial gym if worse comes to worst i'll have tried everything possible for a full year and i know that if it didn't work that was my best effort and i'd have to go back and work somewhere else so you were just like this was all in balls to the wall all in everything never i didn't for two years didn't go on holiday didn't take a day off like i worked six or seven days a week for a full year never took anything off because i was always trying to work on teaching classes and getting new clients cleaning the place maintenance emails, phone calls, everything was all done by me because I had no choice. And then I had to do that for a full year. And then I had to say to myself, if I didn't try to do a 100% effort, I knew that I would have regretted not trying 100%. Yeah. Well, fuck me, man. I mean, that, that takes a set of fucking good honeys. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That, that takes some balls. What I mean, what like, what, like, you, like what, what was, the, but there must be something deeper here. Like, because, to go through that hardship, I feel the only people that can make it through something like that is the people that really know why they're doing it. So, like, what was driving you? Yeah, that? well, like, even when I was back in school, like, you'll, you'll see in if you go ask your teachers from school, and when I was 12, 13, I always wanted to be a trainer. I just wanted to train people. I wanted to be a person trainer. And that was back in the day when there was no Facebook, no internet. I just wanted to be a person trainer. And then as I grew, uh, the hunger for that, I was always into sports. I was into different types of sports. I loved the strength and conditioning side of being better in the gym to be better on the field for football or hurling or whatever it was and as i finished school i never actually finished school i didn't i left school when i was in sixth year i never finished school I'm never gonna leave and say it so then i worked then as a lifeguard for a couple of years and then i went to class to eat it to do a plt course and then that's when i really fell in love with teaching group classes as well and then i was the only person who really in like into that and then i went and done pt course after that and while i was on my gym instructor course a manager from total fitness came by and seen me teaching a class uh, in the college and just hired me the next day. That's how I ended up working in a commercial gym. And that was just pure luck that he was walking by while the class was on. He looked in the door, liked what he's seen, and then rang me up the next day and asked me that I want the job. So holy shit, dude. Yeah. Okay, so that's obviously you're just a driven motherfucker. I I, yeah. I feel I feel inferior now having heard that story. <laughs> I was shit at car. I was fucking shit at soccer. I was shit at all that stuff. So look, this is something I think you could offer advice on because lots of people contact me, and the biggest, the biggest thing that comes through when people are asking me questions about getting into fitness, you know, especially with the elite and stuff like that, is that they have a fear. They're afraid that they might fuck up. They're afraid they're not good enough. Like that's the biggest thing facing them. So, what advice would you give to somebody who's shit scared 
of getting into fitness and gives it feels. Well, that's it. Like, don't get me wrong. I was scared of failure. You're always going to be scared of what other people think. That doesn't matter. Like in 10 years time, if your gym closes tomorrow because you tried your best and it didn't work, the fear of that is not going to affect you in 10 years time. No one's going to remember. No one, like you will remember. That's it. So don't be afraid of what other people think. Go with what you want to go with. Run your gym the way you want to run it. So if you want to do CrossFit, if you want to do TRX, if you want to do spinning, whatever you love to do, go after that and go after that hard. And don't try to do too many different things straight away. Pick something that's simple to follow. Make systems and go for it. The fear is always going to be there, like with money. Will I have enough money from rent and memberships? The start is always going to be hard. You're only going to have a couple of clients. If you do well with them, you get a couple of more clients and then a couple of more clients. And then the, the revenue just increases. Then you see, I can buy a rower, I can buy kettlebells, I can buy whatever I want. And then soon you can do better things with your clients. They enjoy the classes more. Then more people come. You can facilitate more people because you've bought more equipment. All of that kind of stuff. But also, I'd get advice as well. I wouldn't just open the gym without getting advice on what type of a unit to rent, insurance, fire safety, um, business planning, all of that kind of stuff. Because people just go out and they rent the big fucking space. They think they have enough money for it. And then after a while, there's a hole in their pocket and there's no money left, which is what happened to me. If I could go back in time, I would have hired somebody that had a gym to give me advice on how they open the gym. Even if it was somewhere far away from me, I would have hired somebody who opened the gym. What did you do from step one to step 10 of from starting off? Where did you look for a place? How did you find a place? Paying for it, uh, costings of fire safety, all of that other stuff, insurance that people don't think about. And then it eats into your budget before you even know it. And that's before you buy equipment. Yeah. And this is all the stuff that people, the unsexy shit, the yeah, people yeah. Don't think of, you know, it's like fire safety, uh, varying the usage clause on a lease. Yeah. And you're like, what? What the fuck does that even mean? And then you're having a bill for 14 grand. It's like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. You know, you open up a whole can of fucking worms and you don't really do your due diligence yeah. shit, can you? And then all your council rates and your water charges, things that you don't think about that will just come back in a letterbox, in an envelope, and then you have to pay for it, no matter what. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, you gotta get scared of fucking opening that or yeah. something, do you? Yeah. And <laughs> then, um, <laughs> but if you nail all that from the start, you know where you stand, you know where you're going, and you know what it has to be done. And if it's just not viable for you right now, you have to look at a different option. If it's viable for you, then you just go for it. Great advice, mate. Okay. Well, then, what do you think? Because again, just the audience that's watching, a lot of them are going to be personal trainers or they're thinking about getting into training. Um, and especially even the guy, the, the dude you're wanting to hire as well. Just give us a heads up again. How, how do you want these people to apply for the coaching role with yourself and the opportunity? Yeah, well, I'll put a link in. Uh, you can go across the powerful at gmail.com. That's my direct email. You can just direct, direct email me your CV and a few details about you, what experience you have, all that kind of stuff. I look at all the emails. We're going to start interviews next week and the, we'll do interviews for a few weeks and then we'll pick the most successful candidate to come upstairs um, and then see what happens. But then. Um, we're looking for someone who's driven, wants to work with people who's uh, willing to learn. So you don't have to be an amazing instructor. You just have to want to be able to be there every day and get better. We can train you to be better. If you have a really good attitude, want to learn, want to coach people better, and want to care about your clients and care about your success and grow yourself into the fitness industry and make more money. We don't want a lot of rent from you. We don't want all your money off you. We want you to be successful and make a good career for yourself. We yeah. want to be able to pay you a salary that's... Uh, a top in the industry where you can say i go to work every day i enjoy my job i get paid well for my job i'm respected in my position and i always get help when i need it and support from my owner or my uh, head coach or whatever excellent man you know? well moving on from that then what i want to know is like what do you think is the biggest problem facing personal trainers today i think there's a few things one is they don't know where to start when they get qualified Two is they're afraid to actually leave a job now to go into the fitness industry. So they're maybe working in a bank or whatever, and they want to change career completely, but they're going to have stuck in limbo. I have money here coming in. Where do I go when I want to get into the fitness industry? How do I start transitioning out of this and going into that? And then also, there's so many gyms now. There's so many PTs. If I'm telling anybody out there, the more gyms that's out there, it's better for you. That means people want to train. That means no matter what you do, it can be still profitable nearly because there's so many people interested in training like in your in our area alone if i drive for 15 minutes around there's probably 20 gyms whether it's a commercial gym a small gym a person training gym across the gym a spinning studio whatever it is a yoga gym but we're still making money you yeah. know so we're up to doing something right so if you're better than everybody else you have a better attitude 
you have better coaching, you have better systems in place, you'll definitely succeed. If there's people all around you opening gyms, you, it means that people who live in your area want to train. If you do it right, you're going to succeed. You know, I think those are the main three things stopping people out. It's like the fear of not knowing where to go when they finish their course, even if they don't have a job right now, they might be just out of college, they might be only 20 or 21. If you're in a career right now and you're trying to transition into the fitness industry, how do you start doing that? That's another thing that people have an issue with, I think. And then also opening a gym in a place where there's already lots of gyms or being a personal trainer, even in a commercial gym, when there's loads of other PTs already in there, you know? Yep. Yep. I think that's something they find out. But if you go into a commercial gym and you don't succeed, you're definitely, definitely just hiding away in a back room somewhere because there's clients everywhere around you. All you have to do is start talking to people. There's thousands of people. Like if you go to a bend on gym or a fly fit gym, there's at least 3,000 people every week that you can connect with that will pay you money. You know what I mean? Excellent advice. And I, I think you're right there. I've been saying that for fucking 10 years. Like the fact that those gyms have so many clients, yet the trainers are so afraid to approach them yeah. because they're unwilling to hear the word no or the yeah. fear of rejection. Yeah. So if they're not yeah. even. If they're not willing to even feel enough to get it right, I mean, fuck, it's never gonna happen. Exactly. Don't I think I think the trainers, the new trainers, all need to realize you're never gonna get yes from everybody, from every sale or every question you ask. You're never gonna get results with everybody because they won't follow what you say, and you just can't make them. They're not willing to do it yet, or they're not willing to change. So, yeah, they're never gonna stay in your gym for a long time if they're not gonna get results. They're willing to put the work in. So you have to be willing to understand that you're not gonna be able to keep everybody forever and get results with everyone and you're not going to be able to get a, a yes from every woman they ring up the phone or when you ring up them on the phone they're just not it's just not going to happen but what you can fix is you know how you question people when they answer the phone to you how you survey them how you get information from them and how you use that information to make a sale and then you've done your best opportunity with each customer to not convince them to buy your product but to explain what your product is and then give them a solution to the problem they have and if they like it they're going to sign up if they don't like it or they know that's not going to work for them they just won't pay for it Excellent. Couldn't have said it better myself, my man. David knows his shit, people. I hope you're taking fucking notes. Well, that's okay. years and years of following this group as well and talking to you guys. And like, if you're in this group and you talk to Sean and Jay and a lot, or you're following other trainers and then you open your own gym, don't give up on following this stuff after a year. Always follow it. You can always learn something from someone who failed, someone who done something different than you, someone who's just after opening a gym or someone who's opened the gym for. 15 or 20 years you're always going to learn something different from different people so you'll always benefit from groups like this as well that's another thing i say to people is don't stop following stuff you, like i've seen a lot of trainers you get you know they have their own gym where they have a lot of clients and then they think they're great and then they get lazy and then a year goes by they haven't done any continuous education or invested in that business and then it starts to go bad for them yep yep i'd happy to agree man 100 you gotta yep. continue to invest in yourself like that always struck me as just mental how some trainers aren't willing to invest in themselves, yet they think that their clients should invest in them. Yeah. If you're not investing in yourself to get better, how can you expect the client to invest money in you? It just it never made any sense to me. So, if we're just to sum this thing up then, Dave, what would you say are the three most important pieces of advice you could give to, if it was somebody getting into the industry, or if it was somebody who's looking to further on their business? Well, let's say if you're looking to get into the industry, you know, pick what area you want to get into. There's so much going on now, like yoga, Pilates, that sort of things. Then you've got spinning classes, TRX, all the usual kind of commercial gym type of classes. Then you've got CrossFit or strength conditioning or sports performance sort of things. Pick what you like to do, first of all, that you'll enjoy. Pick what you're good at and pick uh, one of those areas to work in because you know you're going to enjoy it and then go after that really hard. Like we picked CrossFit because I loved CrossFit and I loved how we can help people with CrossFit. And I only did CrossFit really hard and that's our niche market. And that's not, we've never got distracted from that and else. That's why we were successful with it. And then the second thing would be, you know, get advice if you're gonna open a gym, definitely ask for help if you're gonna open your gym for the first time. If you're gonna go to a commercial gym, continue your education, go talk to clients, Get as much experience as you can working with people from different backgrounds, different sizes, different shapes, and learn from those people. You're not going to get results with people in your first year if you're just out of college. If you haven't worked with a lot of people with different diverse backgrounds and ask questions and try things with them. Unfortunately, I think in our industry, people are afraid to try things with clients because like there is the risk of obviously injury or not getting results, and they're afraid that if the client doesn't get results, they're gonna leave. But if you never train people before, you're not gonna be the best trainer in the world. But if you do train people and try things with them, you're gonna get better as well. 
I say that's for a new client and then someone trying to expand their gym who already has a gym he was kind of struggling say they're still on their own they've been three years open and i haven't got the money to hire somebody else or hire clean or something like that i'd say sit back on one of the weekends write down all of the shit that's wrong with your gym that you want to fix make systems for them figure out what you need to do in each area whether it's marketing or sales or coaching a class from start to finish people forget that it's not just go in and show a few exercises and that's it it's actually talk to people ask them about their lifestyle why did like we train only 12 people at a time in a class but i know all of our clients inside out what they work out where they live what they do what sports they play how old they are what injuries they may have had over in the past so we can tailor the training towards their specific needs they'll stay for longer because of that and they're going to get better results because of that because we can modify things towards them so really go into detail with how you coach a class from start to finish don't be on your fucking phone in a class don't be eating food in a class don't be talking to the hot chick in the corner in your class and nobody else or talking to your mate who comes to your gym because people will notice that over time you're only talking to the same one or two people and you're eating food you're on your phone on facebook whatever and you're not actually engaging with everybody we give we have a rule where there's like a three to five uh, minimum contact with every member that comes into the class so three times we give them feedback throughout the class minimum five times is what we're aiming for with every single client on that technique or little piece piece about the class what we're trying to get from them and the aim of that program today so that's kind of a tip i'd give people as well then i look at your systems from terms of when a member signs up what happens from the outside in when they text you or ring you what happens next what do they do after the phone hangs up how do they join how do they pay how do they get in the door and actually start training with you don't just let them walk away if they've agreed to train and not pay for that and not showing up for that and those type of things because i learned from you guys that if you hang up the phone without confirming an appointment or a payment or a booking they're most likely going to forget about that in the next two or three days. And then you'll ring them back and go, oh, do you remember I was talking to you the other day? And they won't even answer the phone to you again. They're just gone. It's, and that's money just walked away. That could be in your pocket. They're gone to another gym because they probably just forgot about you and went to the next nearest place. Like. And um, I'd say when you get coaches in, if you hire a coach, make sure they want to follow the same principles as you. They have the same core values as you. Like we want a strong community, friendly people, passionate about training, who want to invest in themselves to get better and don't have a bad ego that's what we want to remember so if you have someone who wants to train people like that train your staff to be the same as you and teach the class a similar way talk the same way to members treat them the same way and also manage your facility the same way so don't let them leave dumbbells and kettlebells all around the place clean the place keep it tidy keep it neat and if you own a gym and you haven't painted or cleaned the gym in a year do that this weekend seriously i've seen gyms that there's wires hanging out of roofs no paint on the walls like if you have a gym that's struggling right now, you can make more money next week by going out and cleaning a gym from top to bottom and painting it brand new. Someone will walk in then sign up straight away when they see how good it looks. You know what I mean? They won't even know what about the training it. But if you walk into a dirty gym where there's shit broken and dirty paint on walls and stains everywhere in the bathroom, no one's going to join that, you know? Oh, I think they're the, the main points for people who want to start in the industry and the people who are already in the industry and are struggling to get by, you know? Somebody give this man a mic because he wants to fucking drop it. That was just outrageously awesome, man. Fuck me. If if you're watching this and you haven't got a bazillion notes and shit that you're going to act next week, I don't know what the fuck it is. I, I, you've just handed somebody how to run a gym 101 there on a yeah. fucking plate, right? <laughs> Loved every second of that, David. Awesome. You're getting a lot of love on Facebook. Let me just give you the comments we're getting here. So, thanks <laughs> for giving you a shout out. Great insight, David. Thank you very much. Anthony McAvoy's on here, and he says, and on top of all that experience, he's an absolute gent. Paul McManus oh, said, yeah. hi. So, dude, look, I have to say thank you very, very much for coming on and giving us no all this. Absolutely deadly story, deadly story. Uh, here's something that's motivational stuff, Dave. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. So here's what I want to do. I want to give you another chance to, to cover the opportunity yeah. did you have for someone joining your team and how they would apply just before we finish this off here yeah cool so we're looking for someone who is motivated driven who's already in the industry maybe six months to a year at least who wants to start classes for us we're going to expand our studio upstairs we're going to have a 2000 square foot facility fully kitted out with the best of everything all the equipment you need we're going to train you on sales and marketing we're going to start at least 12 classes a week that you will have straight away to walk in to teach then you will have the opportunity to use the studio in your free time for personal training. We don't want any money from you. You can use the studio and personal training as much as you want in return for doing classes for us on a base salary. If you're not a personal trainer and just a gym instructor and want to do group classes, 
that's totally fine. We'll pay it a salary to do group classes as well. So we may even get two people, one person who wants to do personal training and classes, and one person who wants to just do either classes or personal training separately. It's up to you guys. But that studio, I'm telling you now, guys, will be eaten up in the next three, three to six weeks by someone who really wants to make money and be here for the next five years. We've signed a new lease for six years here. So we're going to be in this building for six more years with showers, change rooms, everything that your clients need. And I'll put the link in the comments after this for our email address so you can email me your CV and I'll give you all a call and get you in for interviews. Absolutely fucking awesome, dude. Dude, yep. thank you. Thanks, Thanks again for taking the time out to give us this stuff. That, no problem, that was top quality. So, man, what's the, what's the plan for the rest of the day? Plan for the rest of the day is we just got a delivery, a load of equipment downstairs is to unpack that and make it. That's the plan <laughs> for the day. <laughs> Building shit today, man. Yeah, that's it, man. Julio. Julio. Well, like, Mate, I'll let you get on with that. Thanks a million, dude. Cheers, man. Thanks, Sean. See you soon, man. Cheers, dude. And Cheers, for everybody bro, bro. watching this on Facebook or listening on the podcast, remember you can be part of the live action if you want to join us on Facebook in the EFPA coaches community. Just ask to be a request to be added. We'll get you in there, and then you can ask questions and be part of the live show. Thanks, everybody, very much for watching, and I'll see you next week, and hopefully my voice will be back. I'm a throat will be back to 100% normal. Cheers, dudes. Have a good weekend.